Let me show you the epicenter of what is the biggest environmental fight of the day. Yeah, yep, there they are. See those two buttes? Those are the bear's ears, but they are just a tiny piece of this huge fight because Bears Ears National Monument is 1.35 million acres. That is over 2,000 square miles of wild western vistas holding a potential fortune in oil, gas, and uranium underneath tens of thousands of Native American ruins. <laughs> To folks like Mark Maryboy, these sites are worth more than any mineral. To the Navajo and Hopi, Zuni and Utes, these canyons hold the spirits of loved ones. They live among us just like you and I were communicating. These are your neighbors living here. Yes. The person who carved this art 1,200 years ago signed all their work with a wolf paw. But equally striking are the modern bullet holes. Just one sign of the tension that goes back to the first Mormon wagon trains. They didn't want to work with us. In fact, one of the county commissioners says, um, you guys lost the war. You have no business talking about land planning process. For generations, natives sought protection for this land, but it wasn't until the five tribes put aside their differences, rallied the support of rich outdoorsmen like Patagonia founder Yvonne Chonard, and lobbied the feds that they got their wish. Weeks before leaving office, Barack Obama declared Bears Ears off limits to any new drilling or mining. And while some cheered the prospect of a new tourist economy, others saw it as pure tyranny. It felt like a kind of a sucker punch. Um, it didn't feel right. Uh, and it hasn't felt right for a year. Phil Lyman is among the Trump supporters who spent the weekend cheering the president's decision to shrink Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument significantly. They point out that the biggest, poorest county in Utah already has four other parks and monuments. They don't want elites using their backyard as a playground. and just want to control their own destiny. By designating a monument, what you're doing is you're using a tool that will bring hordes of people to a place that is very sensitive. There's nothing that we want to unprotect. There's 13 layers of protection on artifacts and um, species and wildlife and, uh, and vegetation. There are loopholes in those rules that you can drive an oil rig through. Josh Ewing came from Nebraska to climb rocks. Painted shirt, that's a rim of a bowl. And fell so hard for the landscapes and history, he formed an advocacy group and is building a visitor center with whatever donations he can raise online. If this place was anywhere else but southern Utah, I don't care if it was Mongolia or Zimbabwe, it would have been protected as a national park a long time ago. But because of the politics of Utah, yeah. this place is still a debate. Well, I think the only thing this administration understands is lawsuits. And the head of Patagonia says he's ready for a long legal fight. We're losing this planet. And we have an evil government. And, you know, not just the federal government, but the wacko politicians out of Utah and places. I mean, it's evil. And I'm not going to stand back and just let evil win. And what's, what's his net worth? Billion dollars? Two billion dollars? So you've got Patagonia here, you know, waving the flag of environmentalism while he's just completely exploiting the outdoors for industrialized tourism. If these rocks could talk, they'd tell of centuries of bloody human conflict before the United States decided to set aside the special corners for we the people. This is your land, but Bears Ears is a reminder that how it is used all comes down to how you vote. Bill Weir, CNN, near Bluff, Utah.